pinnacle of the violence by the police that were meted out in our communities during the miners' strike. The police and the state tried to send a message to our communities that their fight for their jobs wasn't to be tolerated and they tried to beat us back to work. We're here today to make sure Amber Rudd and the government know that we won't be silenced, we won't shut up, and when they did that disgraceful decision and said there was no public inquiry in October, we're going to fight to the very death to make sure we get one. One month after the miners' strike finished, they had meetings in buildings like this talking about how they would never let us have a public inquiry in case there was a witch hunt against the police. What about our communities that suffered in the miners' strike? What about the miners that were beaten up and the miners that were locked up and the miners that were fitted up by the government? That's why we're here today and that's why we want an inquiry. There's the merity of that thing inside there who says nobody got killed. Well, I'll tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. Dave Jones and Joe Green got killed. Where's their public inquiry? Where's the, where's the peace for their family? The lads who were sacked. Where's their peace? What about all the people who've gone and forced it to the graves? Still wanting that peace. Still wanting that justice. All the miners' strike was an absolute parody of lies and deceit. Villages were cut off from each other. Police took it over. It made it into a police state. Kids were rounded up and given good ideas by coppers in back streets. The biggest travesty was the fact that policemen can lie and know they're going to lie, going into a court of law to try and get a conviction to put some of my friends away for 25 or 26 years. and just walked free meant that there was an even more assured and confident South Yorkshire police force to kill 96 people in 1989. The campaign runs in Liverpool to try and asked all of the news agents, stalkers basically, to desist from selling the sun after the Hillsborough inquiry, you know, highlighted the misjustice of the print on the day. So the attempt is to get 96 taxis in Liverpool with the same side graphics on, so that rep represents one for every person who died in the disaster. <laughs> activities of the police at Orgreave as well as at Hillsborough but we must also have an inquiry into the activities of the Metropolitan Police, the links with government and the links with Murdoch. The national press are part of the corruption triangle, they are part of the collusion, they are part of the conspiracy and they are part of the criminality. We think it's an absolute disgrace what happened in Orgreave. We had a police riot that day. We had 40 people too badly injured that the police had to pay out compensation out of court. These preventive go to court. It was political policing. And that has continued to the present day, continued through the blacklisting. We're working class people, anybody who fought against the absolute right of the bosses to make a profit at our expense, we killed people on building sites, were prevented from working. And the RMT are continuing that fight today. We're out all over the country in defence of health and safety, in defence of the safe and critical rule of the yard, in defence of the public safety, and of course in defence of staff safety and disabled people who travel. So it's all part of the same struggle. This is our banner here, the Burnley Supporters Banner. We don't just fight for us. 
us who was attacked by big construction companies and the police. On our banner, we've got the Shrewsbury Pickets, we've got Allgrave and we've got Hillsborough. Because this isn't one struggle, it's a struggle for all working people and we're all in it together. We're trying to get justice for the Shrewsbury Pickets, not only their pickets but their families as well who suffered greatly. In 1972, Des Warren and Ricky Thompson were in prison. They were framed up basically by the state. The Home Secretary, Robert Carr, was uh, lobbied by Bovis, Langs and uh, you know, Mac Alpines because uh, they didn't like the fact that after a three month strike, a bitter strike, the building workers won basically everything they basically asked for. an inquiry was the same day the Court of Appeal said that even though the law was wrong, the Supreme Court said the law took a wrong turn 32 years ago, the law of joint enterprise that means collective groups can be convicted of the crime of one person, they also said that none of our appeals could have an appeal. So they, they did that about an hour before they announced, MOJ announced that all grieve were not going to have an inquiry. They deliberately buried the fact that our loved ones are serving mandatory life sentences in prison for crimes they didn't commit. So we're here today in solidarity because when there's no justice there will be no peace and we will not give up fighting for our loved ones who are wrongfully convicted and serving mandatory life sentences. was the backbone of that historic strike, 84-85. And Brenda Proctor, our dearly beloved sister and comrade, who died recently and has broken all our hearts because she was taken away from us too young. All Brenda won is for the fight to go on, and it will go on, and it'll always go on. We'll always fight for our class, we'll always be here. We'll be here with the sisters and the comrades and the brothers, always. We are women, we are strong. We are strong. Thank, thank you very much. I'm just going to read a message of support out from Australia to show you how, how much international support we've got. It's from the Maritime Union. It says, for many of us on the left, the struggle of the British miners' strike in 1984-85 was a defining moment in our lives. To see the unmasked power of the state unleashed against British miners was a lesson in the corrupt and brutal nature of the state. It was also a lesson of courage. In the face of great adversity, the miners and their families and communities showed that one union can stand together and it's one union around the world. World. Keep up this fight. Never, ever give in. We owe it to the generations coming after us to tell them how this country was policed and governed in the 20th century so that they can make it fairer in the future. The Orgreave campaign was promised a full public inquiry and the Labour Party will not rest until you get one. We'll never rest until there's justice for Orgrave and we'll never rest either as a Labour movement until the unfinished business of the miners strike is finished and by that I mean a society, a society in which we all enjoy the fruits of the 99% who make our public services run, who create our wealth in society. When we all come together, we put this lot on the back foot and we need to keep them on the back foot until we have truth and justice.
back on the pavement, please. Then we'll fuck you over. Yes, we have. 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 Y